So let us learn about the first control statement which is a break statement. What a break statement does is that if a loop encounters a break keyword anywhere in the loop, it will terminate that loop. How it works we need to understand that and in what kind of loops can be used we need to understand. A break keyword can be used in any kind of the loop and once it encounter it will terminate the loop, come outside of it and execute the rest of the statement outside the loop. In case of a switch statement also we can use a break keyword. How and what a switch statement does will look in the future but let us understand what a break keyword does. A break keyword if being encountered in any of the switch case then the loop will terminate at that time itself and it will jump to the next case. So the break keyword which is followed with a semicolon is being used to terminate a loop. By this graph it is very clear how a break statement works. It says that if the condition is met a block of statements is being executed. Until the condition is true, the cycle keeps moving or the iteration keeps repeating and once the condition is false, it comes outside. But what if the condition is true, it is trying to execute certain block of statements and at that time it encounters a keyword called break. Break keyword being encountered when it is trying to execute a code of statements then that particular time the break will terminate the loop and come outside. So let us understand about the break keyword how it works in the case of for loop. Here we have a class with that we have created called test with the main method and we are trying to create a for loop. In first thing first parameter or the first element of for loop where we have initialized the value of i as 50. Second, we are trying to check the condition if i is greater than equal to 0. If yes, if i is greater than equal to 0, then please execute the block of statement. Inside for loop, we have provided another condition where it tries to check if the i value is equal to 30. If yes, please go and terminate the program. If not, execute the rest of the statements. So in this case where the i value is 50, it will go print the value 50 then go back to the update statement. Now the i value will be 40. It will again come back check for the condition if 40 is equal to 30 that is no. Therefore the rest of the statements will again be executed. The value is printed as 50 then 40. Now the value will be 40 minus 10 that is 30. Therefore, it will come and check the condition. It says if 30 is equal to 30. Yes, 30 is equal to 30. Therefore, the block of statements inside the curly braces of this condition will be executed. And the block of statement is what here? We have a single keyword called break. This break keyword itself is more than enough to terminate the program. Once it encounters the break keyword, the program will get terminated. No more the loop will be iterated or no more the loop will be incremented or decremented. Therefore, the value that will be printed is only 50 then 40 and from 30 none of the value will be printed. In order to understand break keyword, let us take another example. This another example is of an enhanced for loop. We will see in future what is enhanced for loop. But to understand a break keyword, how it works under enhanced for loop, we'll try understanding that. So under the class test, we have created an array of integers where the value is 10, 20, 30, and so on. And what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to get each of the value or each of the element of an array stored it an variable of integer type and then compare and execute. So it says that first it will fetch the value as 10 then check if 10 is equal to 30 or not that is no the condition is false therefore it will come out and execute the rest of statement. It will execute it will print the value first as 10 then the second value as 20. Now when third value is fetched that is if 
30 is equal to 30. Yes, the condition is true. In that case, it will execute the statements under this conditional block. And the statement is again a break keyword that will terminate the loop at that point itself and will not allow to execute any of the statement or any of the iteration. Therefore, the out will be only 10, 20 and no more values will be printed. So let us see practically by executing this program how a break keyword enables terminating a for loop when a break keyword is been encountered. In this program, we are trying to explain how does break keyword works. We have created a class called break statement and under the main method, we would be writing the block of statements which needs to be executed. We have created an int variable which hold a value. Initially, we used to write as int the variable name and hold the value. But what if we want one particular variable to hold a series of values? In those cases, we create an array of that particular type. So we want a series of value which are type of integer to be stored under int. So we write int, then the brackets, the variable name and the series of value in curly braces followed with a semicolon. So our condition here is to check if x value is equal to 30 or not. And if it is equal to 30, please break the statement and do not execute the rest of the code. What we have done is that we have fetched each of the value from the variable. Currently, the variable number holds the value 10. So we check if 10 is a type of an integer or not. If this 10 is a type of an integer, then it stores the value in x. So now the x value is 10. It now check the next thing. Under for, we have written an if block which checks the statement. Is 10 equal to 30? No. Therefore, if block will not be executed and the rest of the statement under follow would be executed. It shall print the value of x and then the next value would be printed in the next line. Now, it again goes back and fetch the second number from the variable numbers, which is 20. It again checks if 20 is a type of integer. If yes, then it stores the value of 20 in x. Now, it checks if x is equal to 30. Is 20 equal to 30? No. Therefore, the if block will not be executed and the rest of the statements will then be executed which is under follow. Therefore, the x value would be 20 and printed. Now, it goes back and gets back the next value which is 30. It checks if 30 is equal to 30. Yes, the condition is met. If the condition is met, we want to break or terminate our loop there itself and do not print or go to the next statements. So 30 is equal to 30, the term, it terminates the for loop and come outside and no more value of x would be printed. Let us save this file and execute. As you can see in the console, the x value is printed twice as 10 and 20 because the third time the x value is 30 where the condition is met and it says break please terminate the entire for loop.